So in 10.2, we're talking about areas between curves, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about um, uh, what we talked about in 10.1 was we talked about what happens when we look at an area above the x-axis and below the function, right? So we can find this area pretty easily. The, the thing that we have to figure out is what happens if this parabola is the exact same parabola, but it's flipped vertically. Um, you know, how would we calculate, like what area can we calculate there? Because the x-axis is obviously above this. So it would appear that this area should be the same as this area, right? If that parabola was just flipped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example of, and I'm just going to use this kind of diagram that I've started, but I'm, we're going to do an example here. Okay, let's say this is 0, 0. And let's say that this right here is y equals x squared minus 4. All right? And this green one is y equals x squared uh, plus 4. Uh, yeah, plus, sorry, negative x squared plus 4. So that's how we, we flip that, right? The y, all the y values are just negatives of each other. So before we get to between curves, this kind of leads into it, okay? So if I were to use uh, everything that we learned yesterday about antiderivatives, right? Um, we take the antiderivative of the function and we evaluate it, you know, at B and then evaluate it at A and subtract the two, right? We're using antiderivatives. What happens with each of these? Well, with, uh, with the green one, okay, let's do that one because that's the one we did. We did one like this yesterday. What are the zeros going to be for the uh, green one here? The zeros are going to be, well, they're going to be plus or minus 2, right? And how do we do that? You just let this equal 0, right? Negative 4 equals negative x squared, so that's 4 equals x squared x equals plus or minus uh, 2. So these are going to be the intercepts, 2 and 2. So what's the antiderivative to this function right here? What's the antiderivative? It's going to be negative 1 third x cubed, right, plus 4x. Okay, we'll choose that antiderivative and we won't worry about c here for now. But we're going to take the antiderivative of the function. Now, according to 10.1, what we studied yesterday, if we evaluate at 2 and then evaluate at negative 2 and find the difference between um, those values, we should have the area. So let's give that a test here. So the area function, and usually what they say, and you'll see this in the textbook, they actually say the area function, and they always give the end point for, like, to denote what we're talking about. So the area... Um, end point, and I wrote 4, and they, they'll say this, the area of 2, and then it's going to equal the antiderivative evaluated at 2, so this is what we did yesterday, minus the antiderivative evaluated at A. Okay, so let's just give this a test. Does that look, oh, whoops, does that look right with you guys? I'm not sure why I wrote a, a, a 3 there, but negative 2. Okay, so go ahead and calculate that. That's going to be negative 8 over 3 plus 8. Sorry. Why is it negative? Because we have a negative here. Over here, well. Yeah, you got to subtract the same, same thing. So this is going to be actually plus. Now, well, that's a, a subtracting a negative, and this negative two to the power of three is actually going to be negative eight. So it's still going to be um, minus eight over three, right? And then minus a negative eight, so that's plus eight. So um, we get negative 16 over 3 plus 16. Is that, do you guys get that? 
And what's that as a decimal? Did anybody calculate on your calculator as a decimal? So if we evaluate this, we get an area, and I'll tell me if this is right, you got this as well, we get an area of negative 10.667, where up here we got an area of positive 10.667. Okay, does that, does that math, does that look right? Okay, so let's stop and think about this for a second. What this means is, and we know that this is the really, both these problems are exactly the same shape but they're completely flipped vertically, right? So it would make sense that the areas, all right, under, between the graph and the x-axis, those two areas should be identical, right? All right, so what we learn here is that using the method that we've talked about uh, in finding the area under a curve is going to yield us a negative area when we're talking about an area underneath the x-axis. So think about it this way. The area that we're finding is under the curve and above the x-axis. So this is now above the curve and under the x-axis. You see that? That's exactly opposite. So we got to keep that in mind that when we're dealing with, okay, now let me just draw something um, sort of completely separate here, right? If, if we've got a function like this and we got f of x here and you want to find the area you know, between the graph here and the x-axis, if you do it the exact same way that we've always done it with f of x, do the antiderivative, b minus a, you're going to get a negative area. Okay? Does everyone see that? That's going to be a negative area. If the area is above the x-axis, then it's going to be positive. This is going to be negative, that's going to be positive. Okay? That's important. And I don't think we, we didn't really cover that last time, which today, when we talk about area between curves, this is going to uh, maybe uh, help you make sense. Now, what is the area? I'm just going to ask you this now. What is the area between these two curves from A of negative 2 and B of 2? What is the total area under or between these two curves? It's going to be about... 20, yeah, 21.3-ish, right? It's going to be this times 2, right? Okay. Or it's going to be, and I'm just going to give you a little hint here, it's going to be this area minus this area. Yeah, because this is a negative. So how do you make, how do you make these two combine to 20, you know, 21.3. Well, you take the area that's above and you subtract the area that's beneath, and that's going to like like adding the two areas. Okay. So just keep that in mind. All right, keep that in mind because uh, we're going to talk uh, uh, actually about 10.2 uh, right now. So rough sketch here. Um, if I have two lines like this. And I really don't like this line, so let me fix that. All my lines are terrible, but... Okay, so here is A, and here is B. And I want to find this area right here. That's the area between F of X1 and F of X2. This is what we're dealing with today. Okay? What you might be thinking is... I know how to figure out this area right here, underneath f of x1 between a and b. That's what we know how to do, right? Okay? And you also, hopefully, should be thinking, let's use what color cloth, I guess. You should be thinking, I know how to find this area, too, under f of x2 between a and b. So how do you find this area in between the curves? Yes, so area under f of x1 minus the area under f of x2. 
okay? Totally. That's exactly what you want to do. All right? So that is, that's how you find the area in between. Just, I mean, just like any other math problem, right? Let's say I want to find the area of this donut here. I take the area of the large circle and I subtract the area of the small circle, right? So because you know how to find area underneath a graph, this is going to make this really easy. So, oops, eraser. That. All right. So there's two actually ways you could approach this. There's two ways, and the one is pretty straightforward. I'm going to draw you a little diagram here to explain. So what I want to show you here is that if this is A here, and this is B, it doesn't matter if both lines are above the x-axis or if one line is below, what we're going to be able to do here is we're going to take the area um, uh, the area function of x is going to be, and I'm going to use this notation right here, capital F, remember, is the antiderivative, so antiderivative of x1 and subtract the lower one. So it's always the top one first, that, that is the graph that's above minus uh, the graph that's below, okay? And that's going to be important. f of x1 always has to be greater than f of x2 over this interval between a and b for this to work. So whatever the top function is, you take the antiderivative of that and you find the area that would be underneath this graph and above the x-axis. And you subtract, always subtract, the area that would be um, between this lower one and the x-axis. So remember, this is going to be negative, and this is going to be positive. So when you subtract, it's going to be a positive minus a negative, so it's going to be like adding those two pieces together. Alright? So, just remember this right here. And that's going to be important. So the area, if we're talking about two curves, just take the area of the top, uh, underneath the top one, minus the area underneath the bottom one, always. Okay. So method two, and because that's pretty straightforward, I think, um, because we did that in 10.1, I'm going to talk about method two just a little bit here. Method two. Okay. And I'm just going to maybe type this out for you because just a little bit of notes here. If you know that function one is greater than function 2 over the entire interval a to b All right, so method 2 is summarizes to this if you know that function 1 is greater than function 2 over the entire interval a to b and of, that, of course that is important for this other method as well then what you can do is simply subtract the functions first to reduce it down to one function. And then you can just take the antiderivative of one function instead of two, and you can find the area under that new function or that new graph. So this is really doing the same sort of thing, um, just subtracting functions instead of subtracting uh, areas under the, under the graphs. Okay. So, let's do an example. Example 2 says this, find the area of the region bounded by the parabolas y equals x squared and y equals 2x minus x squared. So, you're going to have to find the area in between them. So, obviously, they're going to intersect at a couple points, right, two parabolas. And so, we have to find out first where those intersection points are. And that's going to be our, those are going to be our A and B, right? The, the um, upper bound and lower bound. So on your graphing calculator, you can graph those, which I did here. Right, type them in, graph them up. I had to zoom in a little bit. But this is what the two graphs look like. There is the y equals x squared. And here is the 2x minus x squared. Right here. So we can see that there is a region in between that we need to find the area of. 
So step one is to find the intersection points. Okay. Um, mathematically, uh, you can let these two uh, let these two equal each other. Uh, so if we go back to the the graph here, all right. If we let x squared equal this, what we're doing is we're going to solve for the x where that makes the y equal to each other, right? It makes the y's equal. So mathematically, you could go x squared equals 2x minus x squared. That'd be 2x squared equals 2x. x squared equals x. Um, so x is going to be what? Well, x is going to be 1. x is going to be 0. Is there anything else that has its own square? No. So x equals 0 and x equals 1. What about negative 1? Would negative 1 work? No, because you square negative 1, you get positive 1 here. So, let's go back to our graph, and you can see that 0 and 1 appear to be, uh, you know, right. So, you could check that by doing second function calculate, and type in a value. You could say, what's 1? Well, it's the point 1, 1 on this graph. And then if you use your cursor up, see, it'll show the next graph, and look at that same point. So, that's your intersection point. Um, you, can, you can do that. Uh, and you guys probably know how to find intersection points on the graph, graph and calculator, which I might go over a little bit later. But let's finish this question first. So these are the uh, boundaries, right? So um, let's just make a rough sketch here. And mine is going to be, of course, very rough. So there's there's sort of the uh, the region. Here's zero. Here's one. Yeah, thanks. It's like a flower. That's right. It's like a leaf, anyways. There's no flower, but. So that's the, that's the region, right there. So we need to find the area between them. So, what is this um, parabola right here? What is this? Is this the x squared or is this the 2x minus x squared? Yeah, that's this one. That's the upper bound uh, line or curve. And this one, y equals x squared is the lower one. So, method one says that we can, and, and you don't have to write anything down here, but just watch. Method one says we can find the area under this top one first. We can find that area, and then subtract the area underneath this one. How would we know that? Okay. So we could do that, and when we subtract those two, we'll get this here. I want to focus on method two because a lot of you, I mean, you're going to want to use method two when you can. This is a good one to use method two, which means that you don't have to do uh, the antiderivative first. You can actually look at these two functions and say, okay, I know this one is on top, and so I'm going to subtract the functions first, and this is going to make it real easy. So you can go 2x minus x squared, subtract x squared. All right? And that's going to give you a new function of 2x minus 2x squared. Does that make sense? Now, just for curiosity's sake, let's go to y equals, and let's type that one in. 2x minus 2x squared. And we'll graph that. Okay, so you see this right there? Look at that. That's the new one. Okay, and it looks something like, well, just like this. Okay, so what this is saying is that this area that I've kind of identified with the red marks there, that area should be the exact same as this area. And it does look pretty close, doesn't it? Now, obviously, this is a hand drawing, but if you look here, Okay, the area in between there and the area underneath this graph and above the x-axis, you see? Exactly the same. Let me just zoom in there one more time. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, you're all right? Okay, good, good to know. Okay, let's make that x max 1.2. Okay.
Okay, I still can't see the top there, so let's do the window. Let's make y, y max 1.5. Alright, so we're going to be able to see this bounded region here, okay? And think about this area right here and what that looks like. And then look at the area underneath this parabola. That area there and this area underneath here, exactly the same. Alright? So if we find the area underneath this curve right here, that's going to be the area in between these other two curves. You get that? Yeah. You only have to do the antiderivative once instead of twice. So let's give it a calculation here. All right. Well, no, it's not it. We're not done yet. But okay. So the antiderivative of this is going to be what? <laughs> One over two times two x squared minus. That's going to go up to three. So it's going to be two over three x cubed. So this one-half times two is actually what? Yeah, just regular old one. So it looks like that's our antiderivative. And we're going to do um, the area, uh, sorry, at one, let's do the same notation there, is going to be the antiderivative evaluated at one minus the antiderivative evaluated at zero. So 1 squared minus 2 thirds times 1 cubed minus 0 squared minus 2 thirds 0 cubed. So 1 minus 2 thirds minus 0. So what do we get? 1 third. 1 third of a unit squared. And that is your area. Again, this is the notation that they use. They usually use the right boundary, whatever it is. Whoa. They use the right boundary there, where whatever it is, to symbolize that this is the area that we're looking for. So as you move forward, just note that um, here's a type of question that you're going to get. Ready? You're going to get a type of question like this, where you're given two curves, and, yeah, I know, I know, it's going to be amazing, and they're going to ask you to say, they're going to say, what's the area between these two curves from A to B? Now, what you're looking for is this area plus this area. Oh, oh. Ouch. So what this means is, okay, yeah, this is f of x1, this is f of x2, right? So, okay, watch carefully. You're going to have to find out what this point is, because you're going to have to break this up into two smaller problems, okay? So you're going to find out this third point, because, look at this, f of x2 is below f of x1, but over here, it's the other way around, f of x2 and f of x1, see? So you're going to have to do two area problems and add these two areas together, so this one plus this one. Well, yeah, method two only works, you know, when this function is above the other one over the entire interval. So this, no, it wouldn't work here. You can't do method two. You have to split this up into two problems no matter which way you do it. Okay? So that's, that's one thing. Um, and also, they're going to say, you know, find the area between these two random curves. And, you know, they're just going to be like this. Um, and, or they're going to say, what's the area uh, between... Uh, I don't know what they'll ask you, what other questions they'll ask you, but this is the big one, I guess. You're going to have to know how to do stuff like this. Okay? So you can find intersection points on the calculator, and if you want to know how to do, how to do that, I uh, will show you when you're coming up. But that's, that's basically your lesson on 10.2, areas between curves. Yes, thank you, thank you.
Is there a standing ovation or is it? Oh, standing ovation. Well,